so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville welcome to another super interesting episode on the crazy week that was with barista neze <laughs> i know you guys have been looking forward to this series well if you're new here the crazy week that was with barista neze is the series where we discuss all the juiciest nastiest dirtiest <laughs> funnest news all pieced together in one video just for you okay and it captures the news and gist that was in the previous week so welcome to another episode and don't forget to subscribe click the like button and drop your comments on the news that sent shivers down your spine as I bring them to you. All right, let's go on. So Nollywood actress Nkechi Blessing Sunday, popularly known as NBS, has been training for some weeks and months now. First, it was a rift between her and her ex-boyfriend, Honorable Fanle Gong, and both of them have been coming for each other's throats on social media counter accusations accusations counter accusations attacks and reprisal attacks here and there in fact at the point it got very shameful you know i just wanted to close my face like this people were in love before now they were calling themselves um or call yawo or call me husband and wife why all this shame anyways that has been the norm with them since they broke up so it's almost no news and that is not what we're here to talk about concerning in kitchen today what was really news regarding in kitchen blessing sunday was what happened at her mother's one year memorial service that held last week so we will recall that about one year ago Nkechi lost her very much treasured mother in fact when the news of Nkechi's mother's passing made it out to the media everybody was scared for Nkechi because Nkechi and her mother had an extremely close friendship as in they had a very they shared a very very close bonds in case she was always posting on social media of how they suffered together of how she wants to take care of her mother how she loves her mother how she can't do without her mother it was always my mother my mother my mother so when Nkechi's mother passed everybody was scared as to how Nkechi was going to bear the loss or handle the news and just as anticipated it was very hard for her in fact during the funeral Nkechi was fainting and waking up rolling on the casket it was a very very pitiable sight so yes given their closeness one year later everybody was definitely expecting that Nkechi was going to do some kind of memorial to commemorate the life of her mother and celebrate her mother's one year post humorous passing so the question was good it went almost normal you know guests were trooping in and out it was you know considerably normal until it was time to share souvenirs then Nkechi emerged with big dildos <laughs> I don't know if other African countries know what souvenirs are or their significance in weddings, parties, burials and all these functions but in Nigeria souvenirs are like gifts you give your guests for supporting you for coming for your event and they're usually shared at the end of the occasion so the whole social media went <laughs> went gaga like Nkechi. what is the correlation what is the relationship what is the link between a burial and manhood a lot of people condemned Nkechi's act and wondered why of all the gifts on god's green earth Nkechi chose to share sex toys on her mother's burial memorial. They described her action as thoughtless and disrespectful and wondered if her mother would be proud of that action. In fact, they concluded that it was clout chasing. It was like, there's no, there's nothing else you can tell me. Nkechi would chase clout even to the extent of, even to the, to, to the extent of using her late mom. Why would you, why would you share dildo? Eh? What, what are you trying to, what is the, what are you trying to promote? What are you trying to do? Why are you sharing manhood on your mother's, Burial memorial, man, in case you please, as in people really came for her and it was big news. On the other hand, some people didn't see anything wrong with it. They believe that she knows her guests. She knows what they like. So what is wrong in giving them what they like? Many people have plastic plates, trays, cups. They don't even use them at home. But this item, <laughs> her guests will make use of it. That is what they need. So why can't she give them what they need? They would appreciate it more than trays and materials. Come on, she's being thoughtful. 
She's thinking outside the box. As for some people have shared foil, chicken, all sorts of weird souvenirs. So why are we coming from Kichi? So they ask. They said the mother is her own. The money is her own. The occasion is her own. So who are we to dictate to her what she should do at her mother's memorial? They have claimed that people are just being busybodies and we should learn to live and let live. She also has come out to defend her actions with her full chest. Yes. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. Do you think that Nkechi did nothing wrong by being sensitive to the peculiar needs and wants of her guests? Or do you think that she was being so insensitive, so thoughtless, so disrespectful by sharing sex toys at her mother's burial memorial? Let me know what you think in the comments section. So the next story that trended in the crazy week that was is the story of 29-year-old married man, Mr. Douglas Tamunok Boko, who stands accused and has been charged to court for taking the life of his girlfriend. Udo Abigail because she committed an abortion without his knowledge or his consent. And this one happened in Abuja, the capital city of Nigeria. Wonders shall never end. Married people, what is wrong with married people? Every week you guys just find a way to squeeze yourself into my future. Even when I try to avoid you people, married people, married men and women, you will still manage to commit one atrocity or the other that makes it... <laughs> Makes it impossible for me not to talk about. Why are people not respecting the sanctity of marriage again these days? Why are young girls seeing it as normal to date people's husbands, Bikono? Why can't married men keep Kokoro inside Kroza again? Why are married women going overboard? What is happening to marriage in 2022? God forbid back then. So in this case, Mr. Douglas, a married man with two children, oh, a wife and two children, which he camped in River State, was having a sizzling sexual romantic affair with a young girl in Abuja. And of course, having unprotected sex, without caring to know if he's going to take diseases and take back home to his wife. You see these married men sometimes, <laughs> they can be, their punishment sometimes, eh? I don't know where it will be, whether on earth or in hell. You are stepping out on your wife. I know that these young girls too will have their own boyfriends. They are also living their lives. They are not keeping themselves for you. Hello, you are married. They also, have, they also want to get married. And you are having unprotected sex with a single girl and you are carrying your kokoro pack home to your wife to infect the mother of your children. Where is your sense? Anyways, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, so yes, we're having unprotected sex and this girl along the way fell pregnant. What did we expect before? And since she didn't want to have a baby for a married man, maybe because the man was not ready to marry her too, or maybe because she even had her own relationship by the side, she decided to get rid of the pregnancy, much to the chagrin and provocation of her married lover. As soon as he got wind of what she had done, a severe fight and argument ensued, and he went down on her and strangulated her until she passed. Let me read to you what the chat sheet says. That's you, Douglas Tamuno Kopo. On September 1st, around 3 p.m. at the Mogadishu Barracks Abuja, did cause the death of your girlfriend, Udo Abigail, by strangulating her to death. Now, that's not even the worst part of it. Not only did he succeed in taking her life, he had to stage the crime scene to appear as though it was suicide. You see, this case is so provoking. What better way, what better example is there of trying to eat your cake and have it? You have a family, you have a wife, you have two children, yet you want to be completely in control of another young girl's life, somebody's future wife. You see, it is so funny, it is so funny to even know that nobody is as jealous <laughs> as a married man <laughs> dating a single girl. Like, you are married and you are so jealous about a single girl. As in, you want to cage her destiny. I don't understand what is wrong with married men. Please, if you know, let me know in the comment section because I don't know again. And Biko, no, young girls. Young girls, please, avoid people's husbands now. Eh, Biko, avoid people's husbands and avoid this kind of sad and disgusting story. Just imagine your name and your family name being on the tabloids for, for this kind of story. What kind of legacy is that are you leaving for your family? What kind of legacy is that? Anyways, I hope he faces full judgment in court, like the maximum punishment. I hope he faces it in court. Do let me know what you guys think about this story in the comment section. Some people have said that it serves the girl rights for going after and sleeping with a married man, while some people say that the man has no rights to take the life of another person. Do let me know what you guys think in the comment section. So moving on from that one, we're still talking about courts and court cases. 
is our next story. The story of Nollywood actress Halima Abubakar and her alleged ex-lover, Kumpasto, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> this pastor again. This pastor again. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what is going on, but must it be this pastor year in, year out? We have thousands of pastors in Nigeria, millions of them in Africa. Why this pastor every time? You guys will recall the much publicized case involving one Miss Stephanie Otobo and this same pastor. And Stephanie came out then to assert very strongly that she was in a very long-term sexual relationship with this man of God and how they were going from one country to another, one hotel to another. You know, it was a very, according to her, it was a highly sexual affair. She was blowing hot. And all of a sudden, she came out to retract her statement, acting like someone that was either under fear or duress or manipulated. Well, this pastor began trending again about four months ago, but I just chose not to talk about it. One, because a lot of the information was from what a lot of people describe as a faceless blog. I wanted to be very sure of my information before I speak about it. But now that the so-called victim, Halima Abubakar, has come out to say her own story, well, I can now speak about it, but still use allegedly until confirmed. So this faceless blog, you guys know who, you guys know who they are, <laughs> published a very, very controversial list of all the celebrities that this pastor is alleged to have had a relationship with or is having a sexual relationship with. The list was shocking. Big wigs in the entertainment industry. In fact, I don't even want to start mentioning the names. There are some names that I saw there were like, <laughs> Mommy, mom, mom, see, is that you? Like, the list is shocking. Anyways, one of his alleged ex-lovers, cum actress Halima Abubakar, has come out boldly to accuse the pastor of stealing her destiny, invoking an incurable illness on her, trying to silence her and being after her life. She hasn't been minding words at all. She even released pictures and videos of herself with a very protruding stomach that obviously is not pregnancy and severe facial spots and breakouts. And this she attributed to the apostle's spiritual attacks. Well, the Apostle has responded through his legal team. They have issued a cease and desist notice to the actress. They demand that first, Halima should cease to publish all sorts of defamatory articles and publications against the Apostle. Secondly, they demand that Halima writes an apology letter to the pastor. Thirdly, they insist that Halima must publish in five national dailies a retraction of all her earlier published statements and that must be done within three days. And lastly, she must repay him all the costs incurred in pursuing this suit. Well, if you're thinking that that will send shivers down Halima's spine and make her crawl into her shell, you better think again because Halima took to her Instagram stories to tell him, see you in court boldly so let me know what you guys think about all of this do you think that there's any truth in this or do you think that the apostle is just being a victim of these women you know when a man is growing as they say women will start attacking him here and down to pull him down or do you think that in every rumor there is an atom of truth do let me know what you think about this pastor Suleiman and halima abubakar's story well if halima has enough evidence then the apostle is in trouble especially when it comes to reputational damage. But if she doesn't have evidence to back up all these posts and publication, then I'm afraid that she's in deep shit, especially when it comes to the law. So lastly, but very sadly, today's episode of The Crazy Week That Was with Barry Neze is ending with a very, very sad story. It is the story of a 16-year-old schoolgirl all the way in Kenya who took her own life after being asked to shave her hair as punishment in school. So reports has it that this child was asked to shave her hair as punishment for unbraiding her hair on the closing day of school. You guys know that so many schools in Africa have very strict principles of, you know, you have to plait, we call it plate your hair. You have to braid your hair when you're coming to school. But you know, these senior students, you know, when it's about time to vacate, they start to relax and let their hair down, literally. So this child had unbraided, loosened her hair 
on the last day of school and she was caught by a teacher and the teacher made her to shave her hair. After she shaved her hair, she was very furious and upset about the whole incident. She left a letter and took her own life. Now this is a very sad and crazy story to come across. And three schools of thoughts have emerged in this story. Blames have been attributed to three sets of people. Let us know whom. Now the first set of people blame totally the teacher. They blame the teacher for being so mean and insensitive. After all, it was the last day of school. What was she to gain by insisting that that child cuts her hair? We all know that women and their hair, you know, it's like our pride, our beauty. It's our glory. Why must that teacher insist that that child shaves her hair knowing that it's the last day of school? Why didn't she explore other avenues of punishments? In fact, they say some teachers are just in the wrong profession and that if it was their child, oh my God, <laughs> that teacher would have... <laughs> themselves in hellfire because they are going to hold them accountable for what happened to their daughter. So they blame the teacher and they claim that the punishment is not proportionate at all with the offense. The second set of people have blamed this child's parents and family's values and upbringing completely. They claim that her parents have failed very woefully in bringing up a disciplined and emotionally stable child. A child who understands the basic principles of actions and consequences. A child who is able to control their emotions and withstand the challenges that comes with life and living. Life is not a bed of roses, they say. They claim that these parents of these days, you know, are so protective of their children. They do not allow their children to go through age-appropriate challenges. It's not every time that you stand up for your child. It's not every time that you go around fighting teachers, fighting friends, fighting everybody for your child. Allow your child to develop some emotional balance, some independence, some shock absorbers. They claim that if not poor upbringing, what would make a child take her own life because of something so flimsy, so inconsequential, so reversible, so replaceable? So for these people, the family structure, the family foundation, the family values was totally weak and the parents did a poor job raising their daughter. The third set of people completely blame the girl. They describe her as selfish, self-centered, and inconsiderate. They wonder how a child would throw her family into such despair for something so inconsequential. They even claim that somebody so extreme might even be a threat to society and to others and would have ended up hurting other people very badly, like all these school shootings that we get to read about if she didn't get to hurt herself. You know, they were, they were so mad at this child. How can you? Hair is something that is not like you, your hand was cut off. It's just hair. It grows back. How can you torture your family that way just because of the loss of her hair? They were so mad at her and blamed her totally for the tragedy that had befallen. Well, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Regardless of who we blame, this child is gone and can never come back. But do you think that the teacher overreacted or do you think that the child had a fundamental foundational problem that accumulated to this drastic, irrationable action? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So guys, we have come to the end of today's video, the end of today's episode on the crazy week that was with barista neza do let me know all your thoughts and feedbacks in the comment section on each and every one of the stories which of them touched you the most which of them sent shivers down your spine and which of them made you say <laughs> whoa don't forget to subscribe hit the like button turn on your notification bells drop your feedback and stay glued to this channel because there's so much more coming your way it's me your girl barista neza and this is nezaville i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye bye bye